All right, welcome to episode number 14 of the Pay Pigs podcast. We got a real doozy of a show for you today, all about, in case you can't tell by looking at us, we have taken money from big oil. Stay tuned to see just how much, but in this episode, we're going to be talking about why you might be seeing your favorite influencer shilling for, for big oil in subtle ways going forward. We're going to be talking about uh, everything you need to know about the United Auto Workers strike. Oh, yeah. Things are heating up. Things are heating up like 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 a transmission that has been pushed to the red, right? That's really nice, Ben. Thank you. Thank you. Or, or uh, excuse me, an EV battery that has been overcharged or something. We're also, also going to talk about why you might not be able to find an Airbnb in New York City anymore. What yeah. the heck is going on What's with Airbnb on? in New York? Is, is the Is the golden age of Airbnb over? We're going to find out. You might have want to stay tuned to figure that one out because if you got an Airbnb booking coming up for New York City or Philadelphia or Paris or, or any number of, or, or Los Angeles. <sighs> also, the real reason Rite Aid is filing for bankruptcy, the answer just might surprise you, maybe even horrify you. But that's at the very end of the episode, so you got to stay tuned and watch the whole damn thing, you little, you little cutie. All right, we'll see you in there. Yeah, we'll see you in there. Cue the intro. <gasps> like to try to sell something to you. Golly. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode number 14, 14. of Pay Pigs Pod. We got to hit you with a couple reminders right now. If you could please hit that little for the YouTube for the audio listener, you can just pay attention to driving or whatever it is that you're doing. No, you can also rate us five stars. That'd be nice. And leave us a nice thing. Can can people on, on audio subscribe or something where when a new episode they must they yeah, must yeah. hit that bell too but youtube the, you got to hit that little notification bell so you realize i mean every episode drops from a great great height we drop it off the balcony on thursdays <clears throat> so we're going to be posting some new stuff soon though we're going to be posting we're going to be trying out some new content aside from just this podcast we're gonna be doing it on there. Look at those lips. Make a wish. You've got a. You've got a. Uh, you've got an eyelash. Other side. Other side. You got to swallow it. Tuck it down. When I see an eyelash in my food, I don't mind it as much as a normal hair. I just kind of ignore it and eat around it. You know what's been good for um, not minding hair in your food? What having long hair. Every time I have food in my hair, I just go. Every time you have food in your hair? Don't say it. Jesus Every time Christ. you have hair in my food, I just go, it's probably mine. Yeah. Pull it out. Yeah. And it's just like so curly and blonde. Ugh, Jesus. <laughs> no, nah, I would know that wasn't mine. Yeah, yeah, because your hair's not blonde. Or curly. Or curly. Well, well it's, yeah, a, it's, it's pretty well, curly. It's like wavy. hung up on the curly thing. Also, gang, uh, we are going to be releasing, we are going to be unlocking a bonus episode sometime next week. So be on the lookout for that. It's a very special one. Uh, we just wanted to show you what you get when you do freaking Patreon. Also, we're going to be updating the the Patreon tiers and offering more things because we have yeah. yet to do that. If you want to get in there, you can just get in there now. We're going to be after this. Uh, I just got back from my freaking month long Euro trip. Yeah. I'm going to tell Ben some, some stuff about. Oh yeah, it. in this crazy in this week's bonus episode. Also, do you want to plug your show? Oh my God! Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Uh, yeah, if you want to come see me do some... I want to come. If you want to come... I'm going to come. Come see me do stand-up uh, at um, Lyric Hyperion here in Los Angeles, October 12th at 9.30. It's going to be fun. It's going to be me and a couple other pals yeah. joking around. Also, one It'll last thing. Buy a ticket. The link will be in the description. Yeah. Under here. Folks, the credit card list... The credit card website is live. So if you're looking to sign up for what I, I personally recommend, my favorite, the American Express Gold Card, we got it on there. The credit card list dot com. My favorite Go on there. is not up yet. Your his coming. favorite is not. We're it's we're coming. waiting for well we're you can get approved. both. But um 
uh, we, we've got the, the website up and running. We will be adding our favorite Chase cards as soon as we get approved by Chase. It just takes them a long time. Oh, man. I don't know. Did you say, did you say the domain name? <clears throat> the credit card list.com that will also be in the links yeah it'll in be the down there in the description down there man man oh man we'll have to make a whole little video about our faves yeah it'll be that, that'll be coming so that's 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 about it for all the the housekeeping g- janitorial administrative stuff. yeah i feel you look good in that hat by you the way you think so yeah i think so I, I i know so do i look like shit in my hat? That's a yeah. Yeah, he started laughing. No, you know, I look like just, shit in hats. It's, no, no, it's also just very... Um, Old? No, like, yeah, early 2000s, like, ironic. Remember that whole thing? The trucker hat? How hats? could I forget that whole thing? I felt so lame because I couldn't wear a trucker hat because they wouldn't fit me. And I was just thinking, man, I guess I'm just not going to be cool. <sighs> so many accessories I well, just can't pull off. Well, trucker hats will probably be coming back. Cause will they? Every horrible thing we did in the early 2000s are now coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks to Gen Z. Gen, Gen Z, Z is on a mission to make themselves as unfuckable as possible. Yeah. That's just that's just what they do because they think that that's funny, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you still want to? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's their whole thing is just someone someone posted a, a photo of like... The title f- of this episode is going to be Ben Skewers Gen Z. Oh, yeah, just absolutely dogpiling on them. Uh, if you're wondering about why we're, why I'm wearing this, I heart for the audio listener, I'm wearing an, I love American oil and gas shirt. Um, see if you can fit that in there. And Emil's got his BP hat on. I've got my shell hat on. Uh, we're going to be getting to that. This is unrelated. My Brooklyn, New Jersey shirt. That doesn't even make sense. Geographically. There's no New Jersey, Brooklyn. I know a friend of the show, Phil Matteris got me this in Korea. He said, it's, it's very Emil. New that Jersey, Brooklyn. That's actually pretty great. Yeah. He saw have, it and he said, I got to get that for him. That's pretty great. Dang. It does suck to be back, but it also rocks to be back. It feels like we never, it feels like I never left. We were gone for a couple of weeks and we shot a few episodes in advance for you lovely people. Because we didn't want there to be... We would be, never leave you. Yeah, we didn't want there to be any... We shot one in London. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we did. We shot one in London, which was great. And that guy... What was his name? Fuck. Fuck. Hector. Hector. Hector? Yeah, Hector. I remember thinking, Hector's a white guy name? A London guy name? Because I, I think of Hector Salamanca from Breaking Bad. Mm, and you're like, only one type of guy can have that name. Yeah. Hector. Hector. Uh, so we did that. We did the show. Shout out to everybody in Wait, London. You started explaining why you're wearing these shirts. In oh there. yeah. Well, I said, we're <laughs> going to get to that. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. <laughs> okay. And if this is your first time here, fucking welcome to the show. Are you good? <laughs> Am I good? Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I can't tell. Do I look good? No. Really? No, you look great. You oh, look okay. great. You look great. Do I look like I got some color? Uh, yeah. Do I? No, not really. Are you serious? Yeah, on your arm, I guess. On my arm? Yeah, on your arm. Yeah, mine too. That's... Everyone was being very annoying about sunscreen. Well, yeah, you got to wear sunscreen. <clears throat> I know, okay. but I wanted to come back. You know when people come back in middle school and they're like, damn, they went on vacation. Yeah, when people come back in middle school... Yeah, I remember that. You know what I should have done? What? I should have, I should have braided my hair. Then people would have known I went on vacation. What? Did girls not do that when they would like, like going to the Caribbean was a big, ugh, are we really going to get What the fuck is going on? So I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, really? thank you. <laughs> yeah. On the East Coast, especially people would go to the Caribbean or whatever. and Over girls, summer? No, like spring break oh, or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah, And then yeah. they would come back to school, uh-huh. tan, and have braids in their hair. That's Type, type in Cabo white girl braids. Oh, Cabo. yeah. Cabo white girl braids. Okay, okay, sort of. okay. So, is this is this is this what people would consider problematic? Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, no, they didn't do that where I where I grew up here in L.A. I, I don't even remember. Mm. I was just I, I was singularly focused on Super Mario World. You weren't looking at girls in their braids. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, but I I wasn't like, where'd you get that? I just and I'd go. Oh, Jamaica, no way. Bob Marley. <laughs> Sick. Should we get into it? Yeah. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so we 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 oh man <laughs> we we gang we teased it a little bit a couple of weeks what on london yeah we teased it in the london episode to to watch this space because we said that we got sponsored by bp british petroleum we weren't lying man they they paid us a a million dollars a million dollars you, you only got a million what how much did you get that's a little talk off air what the fuck yeah I'm always short selling myself. So, yeah, the reason we're doing that, the reason why we're taking this big fat oil and gas paycheck. Wait, is- I have to say, it's also funny. I came back from, I guess I got in yesterday or the day before. And uh-huh. I was driving home from LAX. Gas, whatever, something happened. Yeah, something in the month. happened while we were going. <laughs> What'd you guys do? You broke <laughs> it. You broke it. Fucking over six dollars, yeah. and I was like, "Oh wow, that gas station's crazy." Yeah, and then it was like, "Wow, that one's crazy," and then I was like, "Oh, I guess we're just doing over six dollars yeah. a gallon." Well, oil is barreling toward a hundred dollars. Holy per, shit! Yeah, and as you know, I think a lot of inflation is here to stay because why would why would companies that can get away with charging more money for goods and services just be like, "Well, I guess we're going to lower prices again." Same thing with gas. Well, gas works a little bit differently, of course, but wh- why is Mondelez going to charge me less for a pack of Oreos when they're getting away with charging $3 or whatever it is nowadays? Oh, well, the prices aren't going to come down. No. Inflation is going to slow, but that doesn't mean prices will come down. Yeah, the rate the rate at which prices are going up is slowing. That's the thing that gets people confused. They're like seeing headlines that inflation is down, <laughs> but and yet prices are still up. Yeah, that's because there's no disinflation yet. There yeah. won't be. You, you said yet. You don't think there will be? No. There's a, there's a, there's a chance that there will be disinflation. Let's okay. keep it. Let's keep our hopes high. Come on. Let's not manifest that. I'm not going to hold my breath. Just like we manifested these millions of dollars from from Shell and uh, BP. Yeah. So, yeah, getting let's... right into it. Uh, the 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 big oil can suck a. Fat. No, they can't. Not with no. The, they actually no. Not, they not with the kind of money they're giving me. Not with this kind of do re me. Detractors of big oil can suck a big fat one. Yeah. So there's a story that broke a few uh, weeks back from this dsmog.com all about how big oil has been paying influencers to try and downplay their role in climate change. And right. They spent months going through all kinds of. Uh, influencers posts and stuff and they <clears throat> they found hundreds of examples of uh, the fossil fuel the big companies paying influencers to you know change the change the, the bad messaging around big oil the, yeah the, the they don't want to be seen as the bad guys anymore can you blame them who wants to be the bad guys in particular they're quote they want quote millennials to have a reason to connect emotionally with oil and gas firms and to tackle their perception as the bad guys and i gotta say they're they're probably really they are good at it i mean they they the the uh dsmog's analysis uncovered promotional material from two pr firms representing shell boasting of the success of their online advertising uh one of the pr companies um claimed that a campaign with explorer robert swan obe i don't i don't understand that name it's the it's the it's the british thing when you're um what is it when you're knighted yeah, you're, he becomes a sir, basically. Yeah. Huh. Well, anyway, it, Wait, made, check if that's it right. made Shell's audience 31% more likely to believe that the oil company is com- <clears throat> committed to cleaner fuels. Um, there was big news last year. I, I don't know if you remember when Shell advertised that they were looking for a TikTok campaign manager. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, that's got to be a tough one. Um and oil and gas giant ExxonMobil has been the highest advertising spender on Facebook and Instagram in the last five years. When it comes to energy and climate related spending, yeah. Spending, yeah. 21, $23.1 million spent since uh, June 2018. And the reason that they do it is because they say people have a lot of trust in creators. When influencers that people know and respect talk about something, they're likely to believe them. So that's why they paid us, because they know that you guys like and respect us. So, right. Well, that seems to be. I mean, I fill up my car with shell. 
And I'm a and I'm a BP man, and y'all know that. Yeah. But no, that's the that's kind of the nasty thing of it, right? Is that um, they have a hard time doing it themselves when it comes from BP. They're like, well, these people are disgusting. I'm not going to listen to anything they're saying. But then it's like, holy shit, Charlie Demelio did a dance about how sick BP is. I also don't know if that's how you say your name, and people are going to drag. Nobody me. actually really knows how to say it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you did okay. Thank you. Um, but yeah, they say in the, 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 this obfuscation of reality seems particularly dangerous when carried out by influencers. Shell's dubious claims are easy to spot when they are disseminated by corporate suits and beige press releases. They are harder to identify and debunk when they are sprinkled into our feeds by people who specialize in captivating armies of online admirers. And another thing, here in the United States and in the UK, there are pretty strict laws governing how you advertise how you disclose that what you're posting on the internet is an advertisement. You've got to use hashtags. They, it's very, it's usually pretty damn clear that it's an ad, but they're also spending in other countries where there's hardly any restrictions right. on that. So like in India, Malaysia, other parts of Southeast Asia, and they're reaching mil- tens of millions of people out there. Um, you have to give it up to them though. It's a pretty... Uh Pretty incredible, masterful gambit, I would say, creating <clears throat> creating an awful problem, lying to people about it for decades, and then uh, and then kind of weaseling your way in there to be like, well, we're the good guys now. We're actually we're yeah. We're, our, our whole thing is green initiatives. Yeah. Speaking of, I uh, mean, that's just a. There was a a part of part of what leaked was this brief. Oh man, BP sure knows a thing or two about leaks. Nice man, you remember that whole. Oil disaster? Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Am I right? <laughs> anyway. The one Mark Wahlberg went down and saved? Yeah. That movie is actually pretty great. I haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. It's okay. great. Okay. You know me. I'm, I'm I'm all about like movies that get 70% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's you're, the sweet spot. I think you're all about shitty movies. Didn't what? You, you like Shooter a lot, right? Shooter rocks. I think you like Mark Wahlberg a lot. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, actually, yeah. Some Mark Wahlberg. I'm not into his whole Catholic thing. But so this is from their creative brief. Basically, BP got together with some advertiser firms and acknowledged, hey, we're in a tight spot. We have to we have to change our brand positioning. So this is what their current positioning is. Um, meeting challenges is when BP is at its best. For over a century, we have successfully adapted to change to provide the energy and petroleum products that are essential to fuel human progress. We believe that what we have learned and the actions we are taking make us uniquely prepared to help the world advance towards a low-carbon future. And this is what they would like to, uh, they're further elaborating. This is what we're trying to help them. Yeah, Get the word out about this is this is their their red light flashing. They're basically acknowledging like, oh shit, society is increasingly recognizing that there is a climate <laughs> emergency requiring a rapid energy transition. BP is transforming itself to help the world reach carbon neutrality and improve people's lives. We get it. <laughs> Listen, we get it, and no company is more willing or able to make this happen. That's their. That's the crux of their entire marketing push is like hey guys listen we're not we know you're smart we know there's no fool in you that's why you can trust us we're the ones who are wanting to do it the most we're the only ones who can help yeah look at our logo it's green (laughs) you guys are probably seeing a lot of scary articles out there about uh climate collapse but we're we're here to help yeah no Uh, but that's the fun so uh they talk about how you know they look at everything they're posting about, but and then what they're actually doing, right? Mm. So a 2022 Harvard study analyzed 2,325 social media posts from 22 major European polluters. It found that 72% of posts from oil and gas firms tried to commute a, communicate a commitment to green innovation. Yet and how as, much did they actually spend? <laughs> yet as the Harvard study also pointed out, the fossil fuel firms included in its analysis had invested just 1.7% of what? their annual capital what? expenditures in low carbon technologies. And correct me if I'm wrong, esteemed colleague, aren't these companies making record profits? Record like didn't profits, they baby. didn't they make so much over over 2020 that it was it was like their stocks were at all-time highs? 
That's right. Yeah. Big oil more than doubled its profits in 2022 to $219 billion, smashing previous records in a year of volatile energy prices where Russia's invasion of Ukraine reshaped global energy markets, and in some cases, the industry's climate ambitions. Damn. I mean, well, so on that note, they're spending pennies on the dollar. They're dishing out just pittances to these people. Yeah, but that that's where we want to reshape this whole thing, right? right? Because that's right. I gotta can, I gotta stay focused here. <laughs> I gotta stay focused. If we if we can get these because you're talking so a lot of you might be sitting at home going, oh wait a second, they're only investing 1.7% of their earnings. Well if 1.7 we, of but a fucking 220 billion. Yeah. Okay. That's a shit ton of money. So yeah. what we need to do is juice those numbers. Let's get them more profit. Yeah. Right. Let's get that money reinvested. That's sure, a good it's only point. one percent, but maybe you're not maybe you're not thinking about it the right That's way. That's actually pretty smart. Because maybe the, you're being pretty pessimistic about this whole climate thing. The more money we make, the more money Shell and BP make, the more that one point seven percent is to then spend on people like us. Exactly. To help to help the perception, the public perception. Speaking of public perception, so this guy Robert, uh, Robert, what was his name? Robert, so Robert Swan and his son Barney traveled to the South Pole to promote its renewable biofuels, um, and it got posted on Shell's Instagram with a whopping one thousand six hundred and ten likes. Because who the fuck follows Shell Gas? On Instagram. Right. I mean, I, I do. I do personally. <laughs> fuck. Fuck. I'm fucking up. Right. This whole thing's so cringe, too. I mean, this guy's like a, you know, he was the... Well, hang on. The Well, because he did he did defend it. He said that he's not a celebrity or an, inf- or an influencer, but an explorer, and that Shell helped in their effort to support biofuel. And he said, we needed a backup fuel because the sun doesn't always shine. And his son, Barney, also... Uh, chimed in, who, who, by the way, advises businesses on reducing their environmental impact and runs an environmental charity, said that uh, to make meaningful progress towards the energy transition, quote, you have to work with big industry, adding that Shell's biofuels are part of that solution. One way to work with them is to, um, I don't know. Just take their fucking money? Put bombs near their, <laughs> their infrastructure. <laughs> I don't, when no one's around i mean this guy's kind of uh definitely towing the party line he says uh, the barney says i've definitely copped a lot of criticism for working with shell uh yet they've offered me a younger person the opportunity to feel represented and build more trust in their so-called nature-based solutions um and it, it worked. I mean, they this uh, this PR firm says that Shell's audience is thirty one percent more likely to believe that the oil company is committed to cleaner fuels. And again, I believe it fully. I mean, their their logo is a shell, which is, comes from the beach, and that is a place that is clean in nature. And I mean, we want to keep think about clean nature. Their ads. And, the only thing you see is like, we are working for a cleaner future. Yeah. And so you would imagine, God, they're transitioning their whole fucking business. Yeah. They're going to be different now. You know what oil company can suck suck one is Sinclair. Sinclair with the dinosaur. dinosaur? It's just, what an insult to dinosaurs. It's not actual dinosaurs. You know that, right? Fossil fuels. Huh? Pretty sure it is. <laughs> it's not. What are you talking about, man? It's not. What is it, people? <laughs> Pass this pizza. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, no! <laughs> what 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 is it then? Genius? It's, if you know, it's, I know. It's well, it's just organic matter that they've. Yeah, and it, where does that come? Where do you think that that comes from? Google it. Is, is I don't know. I don't think so. Is fossil fuels actually dinosaurs? I think that I'll, I'll just take your word for it. <laughs> take your word for it. Okay. Uh, so they, they it just it gets better because they they also paid this. Do you know who astronaut Abby is? No, but I already fucking hate her. Jeez. <laughs> no, well, when I was reading through it, I thought she was an actual astronaut. No. And then I got like pissed because I was like, oh, she just calls herself Astronaut Abby? Yeah, because she's like a science influencer. Also, what? the imbalance of TikTok followers she has to Instagram followers is... Shameful? No, sus, uh, I would say. Why? Does Usually she... people have way more TikTok followers. Uh, well, I think she might have started on Instagram, my friend. Astronaut Abby, I'm watching. Well, 
the they they did this campaign with astronaut Abby and this British guy named Colin Furs, uh, who has twelve and a half million followers on YouTube. It was this um, uh, what is it? This it's it's it was a six week competition. And it ended up getting. They want to solve real life energy problems. They're having. Uh, they're having people innovate for. Yeah, them. basically. Hey, instead of us doing the thing, let's just do a big contest and see if anybody comes up with some good ideas that we can then buy. It's or, like America's Got Talent for fixing the climate yeah. catastrophe. And I'm sure that part of the fine print is whatever ideas you people come up with and submit, we own outright in perpetuity throughout the universe, which is usually how it goes. Uh, but. Man, this guy, this other guy, this environmental content creator named Jacob Simon said, any agency with fossil fuel clients is on the wrong side of history. Agencies have a responsibility to use their talent and skills for good, to connect and make ads that benefit society and make the world a better place instead of harming us and contributing to global pollution and destruction. Damn, dude, give me some snaps for that. Yeah, I mean, Abby? sorry, fuck you, dude. Astronaut Abby, you hear that? Also, she fucking dresses like an astronaut. What are her credentials? Is she uh, Not, probably nothing? Space camp? Did she at least go to space camp? I don't know. I'm sure she's been to space camp. I love this. A Shell spokesperson basically kind of clapped back. You love when Shell is clapping. I back. love it when Shell is clapping back. This person said, "People are well aware that Shell produces the oil and gas they depend on today. However, what many don't know is that we are also investing billions of dollars in low and zero carbon solutions globally as part of our efforts to support the energy transition. No energy transition can be successful if people are not aware of the alternatives available to them. Making our customers aware through advertising or social media of the low carbon solutions we offer now or are developing is an important and valid part of our marketing activities. Damn. Yeah. I feel bad that I ever gave them grief. You should. And now I feel pretty good about taking that money. Me too. Because we have a responsibility to inform the public. Because otherwise, what are they? Now they know. And boom, that what the fuck does that do? Oh, good. They're working on it. I still drive my fucking car. They're working on it. Give them a chance. Oh boy. The my my favorite thing is that they they tapped a UK based a UK based uh dad influencer to promote it. They're called dad influencers. I man. Guys, if I ever become a dad influencer, dad influencer. Put a bullet in the back of my head. Or or the I I'll I'll, I'll want to see it coming. Oh, if that's the case, I hope you become a fucking dad fluencer soon. So you can shoot me? Hey, man. All right. What kind of gun are you going to use? One. A finger gun? <laughs> He's holding up his finger blaster, guys. Yeah, just push me off a cliff. Or or go, Um. Uh. what's that politician's name who I constantly talk about? Diane Feinstein. Go. Let's go Feinstein style. Lure me to the top of a tall set of stairs that has previously been waxed to perfection, and then I'll lose my balance and hopefully fall and break my neck and die, because <clears throat> I don't know. Being a dad influencer just sounds fucking horrific. What do you think, Dylan? Doesn't that sound awful? Yeah, I recently got off Instagram. Wow. Good for you. Thanks. Good for you. I feel really lonely. As soon oh. as, no, no, I don't. As soon as I post these Drew Up pictures, I'm getting off, I swear. <laughs> Oh boy! All right. No, but it's important. So, like, just to to the last thing from this is Gregory Trencher from uh, Kyoto University he said these public messaging efforts from uh, form part and parcel of a broader greenwashing strategy of which the objective is to portray Shell as a global champion in the energy transition. Yet this is far from the reality, as despite having a goal in place to reach net zero emissions, Shell has abandoned its plan to reduce its production of oil by one to two percent each year up to twenty thirty, and it has reaffirmed plans to grow its gas production. All right, so they're going to keep awesome. They're going to keep doing this and and but their outlook uh their what they're putting out in the world is always going to be like, look, we're doing our thing. We're we're going to help. But behind closed doors, it's always going to be the exact opposite of what they're telling you. Yeah. So this <clears throat> this other um this other article from the Wall Street Journal. Right. So as this is all going on, the Wall Street Journal published a huge uh story inside Exxon's strategy to downplay climate change, talking all about kind of Rex Tillerson's tenure. What a fucking at, CEO. If you, 
a thousand monkeys typing on a thousand AI prompts for a hundred years could never come up with a more perfect just like name for an, guy. for an oil CEO. Right, it's really Rex, Rex Tillerson. Rex Tillerson. <laughs> and then you look at his fucking face. He's also, his whole career has been at ExxonMobil. He's, he's oh, a yes, career yes. man mm-hmm. for yeah. fucking... He was CEO for 10 years from 2006 to 2016. But yeah, he was he trained as an engineer and then was working um, Jeez, working at Exxon the entire time. But I, I agree. It's like when, uh, remember when... Remember when in 2012 when Mitt Romney was running for president and you saw his picture for the first time? You're like, that guy looks like the president of the United States. Oh, I thought you were going to say he looks like his name would be Mitt. Doesn't he kind of just... Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mitt Romney. Is he the one who called his wife wife? Or is that Mike know. Pence? You know, know what I'm talking... Oh, mother, mother. He called... It, Mike Pence called his wife mother. Uh. Man, what a What else shit. are you supposed to call your wife? <laughs> <laughs> uh, good point. <laughs> so <laughs> they they first made a public statement. ExxonMobil first made a public statement um, about... Boy, you know who's getting away scot-free in all this, by the way? 76. Nobody even talks about 76 or Chevron. Interesting. Yeah. They're talking about him. I don't know. I don't hear anything. I'm talking about him. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Mobile first issued its, its uh, public statement that burning fossil fuels contributes to climate change in 2006 after years of denial. They, uh, they, they argued that the risk of serious impact on the environment justified global action. So, hey, it seems like, wow, back in 2006, hey, holy shit, the big oil company, the biggest one is saying that, yeah, it looks like this is actually a thing but then behind closed doors surprisingly executives including and especially rex tillerson started to try their best to influence the public's opinion and right. perception about whether or not that's really happening and whether uh big oil is really to blame or whether humanity is really to blame right <clears throat> yeah it seemed like his tenure was kind of defined by oh for the first time it's someone who's softer on uh these messages and more willing to accept some of these realities right but <clears throat> that was more of just a public public perception uh they say the the general perception is that tillerson was softer and and stopped funding the bad guys that were espousing climate change now this is the first x-ray into Tillerson's head and shows he wanted to throw climate mitigation off the rail. It's obituary obituary changing. We got an x-ray looking at his head. Man, what, what was inside? A couple of freaking oil drums filled with c- cerebrospinal fluid? Dude, after a lifetime at, at Exxon, truly that guy's just got the black stuff coursing through his veins. Yeah. It's actually only... It, it's only black before it's refined, right? And then it turns into this beautiful, clear thing that you just want to drink. And smell? Yeah. Oh, brother. Man, I remember I loved the smell of gasoline so much when I was a kid. I still do. But we were cleaning out our family's garage one time, and there was a gallon of gas in there in a little drum. And I thought, oh, boy, I can just go take a whiff of that right now. And I did. And have you ever taken a sniff of gasoline up close? It yeah, hits dude. way different. And my little 12-year-old brain was just... <laughs> And I was, oof. of it course, was, gasoline hits crazy. It was like a, taking a hit of DMT or something. I just, I just saw gas pumps, fractals of gas pumps. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I'm Wait, taking the hat off. I want to, I want to read this one quote from the the current CEO of Exxon, Darren Woods. He's, Darren Woods. So not as powerful a name, not a CEO I trust. So obviously, you know, the journal is uh, the Wall Street Journal's asking about these documents. And uh, so he said, I know, I know how this information looks when taken out of context. Okay. It, it seems bad. Sure. But having worked with some of these colleagues earlier in my career, I have the benefit of knowing they are, are people of good intent. None of these old emails and notes matter, though. All that does is that we're building an entire business dedicated to reducing em- emissions, both our own and others, and spending billions of dollars on solutions that have a real sustainable impact. Shut the fuck up. I mean, it's just like crazy to be like, hey, look, we have all these documents that say you guys were fucking uh, undermining all 
um, movement on climate, uh, including uh, their own <laughs> scientists. <laughs> right. the, by the way, that's the probably the biggest caveat is that their own scientists were saying, "Yeah, this is real. This is happening, and we are actively contributing to it." And all you can offer up is just a. Uh, out of context, that looks bad. These people but, are actually really good. And even if it was bad, we don't even want to pay attention to that. All right. That's just that's just detracting from what we're really trying to do now, which is save the planet. And you're getting in our way. We're trying to save billions of dollars and you're being a fucking pussy about it. I think it. that they're where they're coming from as a as a as a fucking massive two hundred billion dollar corporation, if is not that more. they're tired of being the bad guys. Is that <laughs> I think well I think what they're going to try to do is invest in things that are more alternatives and geared more toward like he said reducing emissions and and no that's I think their, that's going to be things that's like their carbon capture message right but that's not what they're investing in what they're investing in is like new gas and oil projects what they're investing in is making sure that <clears throat> they're lining the pockets of people who can help them make sure the government isn't going to like regulate any of these things. Right. They are now defendants in several, uh, yeah, several lawsuits, the, including Maui. Dozens, dozens of lawsuits. Yeah. One here in California as well. Yeah. Uh, and is that spearheaded by the governor, Governor Newsom, I believe? Uh, the, the California one, that's just the state of California has filed a, a lawsuit against Exxon Mobil, Shell, BP, ConocoPhillips, Chevron. I told you Chevron's in there, dude. <laughs> no! <laughs> and they're not they're not not just the companies they're going after the oil industry's biggest lobby the American Petroleum Institute so the, the people the APA the API fuck i can't even do that right American <laughs> Petroleum Institute API yeah the API so their whole thing their whole thing is that they're arguing that um yeah these climate companies and 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 the American Petroleum Institute basically misled the American public for decades about climate change even when they knew about it and now uh they're Where they're suffering very real repercussions I, it's yeah, gonna be interesting to see if they can actually prove that things like wildfires are directly they're arguing that these companies now need to fund the recovery efforts mm, and stuff and mm. and you know we're not going to be left out to dry anymore i mean right. we'll see how it goes you know what i found most interesting is that there's a fund the the rockefeller family fund is this charity that focuses on environmental issues and they have been issuing grants to finance litigation for these very cases against Exxon. But what's wild about that is Exxon's predecessor was Standard Oil, which was founded by John D. Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the family feels guilt and shame of some sort to be funding the to be funding these uh, the the fund it says the fund has invested millions of dollars in a broader campaign against big oil companies. I don't know. That's like when it's something. I mean, better than nothing. <laughs> I but... give us a million dollars for sure, but it's something. I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I'm not defending the dead John Rockefeller. No, but I think you're de defending his uh, progeny who are now. Doing better than nothing. Billionaire philanthropy. <clears throat> what would you rather they be doing? Oh no, that's fine. But sending I'm not, bombs, <laughs> <laughs> making bombs. That would actually be sick. That would actually be pretty cool. I. That's what I would prefer them to be doing. I would prefer. I, want, I, I would prefer I, them. I, no, no, that's a. Great, I want yeah. the Rockefeller Foundation to be strapping bombs to themselves. I want going. whoever's like the equivalent to Bruce Wayne in the Rockefeller family to do a kind of inverse Batman where he's dressing up, I don't know, as a fucking dog. <laughs> he's going around. And instead of like beating criminals to a pulp, he's, uh, he's, he's bombing. Like a combination of the Joker and, and Batman and just leaving his signature mark with like an R or something. This on is the, Robin? On the bomb. What? No, R for Rockefeller. Oh, not uh, Robin. You fucking you said moron! <laughs> I didn't know what the R. Yeah, I said like Batman, like an inverse Batman. That's Robin. B Robin <laughs> is not the inverse Batman. Robin is his 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 pathetic little um, orphaned sidekick. Inverse Batman Joker. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean. So, <laughs> so. He's like a combination of the Joker and Batman. He's got the Joker's whimsy <laughs> combined, combined with Batman's billions of dollars. 
This is Rockefeller you're talking the, about. The Joker's um, ne'er do well. And how do we stop him? I, uh, nobody can. There's no because there's no Batman out there. Rex Tillerson has to. Rex Tillerson. <laughs> Rex Tillerson's our only hope. Is the only Rex man. Tillerson, if you're listening. <laughs> God, can you imagine being Rex Tillerson's wife and sucking him off? I think about it every day. Jesus Christ. I mean, she's probably got a rock on her hand worth... F- imagine fucking a guy named Rex. I mean, it doesn't sound terrible. <laughs> it's a powerful name. Rex? Yeah. Sure. It evokes a certain giant dinosaur. <laughs> Can we fucking shift gears? I don't know. In, a, in a what? What do you want to shift gears? Yeah, let's shift gears. Let's shift gears. Enough about this. So companies are all trying to be like, hey, we're actually doing good, right? And that no better example of that than this this last week, Apple launching the fucking iPhone. Well, I wait. Let, should we wrap that up? Did we wrap that? Basically, Exxon bad and all these companies are spending money. Don't be fooled when you start to see it. I, I know some people who would probably take some money from uh, from Shell. I know two who would. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Uh, so if you've been living under a rock, you know you know what to do. You, you say hi to the bugs, first of all. But second, Apple released this uh, batshit crazy... Is it the full five-minute... Yeah. We're not going to watch no, no, the whole no, thing, of but not. basically all you got to know is that, to quote Tim Cook, Tim Apple's um, tweet here, at Apple, at Apple, we believe that climate change is one of the world's most urgent priorities, and we are deeply committed to doing our part. Today, we had a special guest, a real force of nature, stop by to check on our progress. And it is, um, it, how would you describe it? It's basically it's cringe. Yeah, it's so it's, cringe. It's, it's a, it's they, a fake. They, I can't remember the woman's name. It's an Viola. Di- no. Mm, Hoop. Sorry, folks. We're in the middle of trying to find out who that actress was. What'd you Google? Oh man, what'd you no, Google? No. Who plays Mother? Oh, Octavia, uh, Octavia Spencer. Octavia Spencer. Fucking... Octavia Spencer. <clears throat> uh, she plays so Mother Nature. You've got the the Apple board. They're all nervous for a meeting, and they're like, "Oh my God, we got to get everything perfect. Mother Nature is coming, yeah, or someone's coming." And then you see the fucking trees rustle, and and then all of a sudden Octavia Spencer shows up, and she's pissed. She's right? a bitch. She's <laughs> she is she's a bitch. so pissed. Mother Nature is so mad at us, and especially mad. At companies, right? She's been going yeah. around to different boards. She's been doing her. She's been doing like, her, like some kind of inverse Santa Claus. Also, can I say the Batman? They, <laughs> they, they fucking they paint her as this. You they know, paint her. What, oh, oh, go on. As this like Bitch. all powerful, omniscient like being. Uh huh. And then for the, cause she's like, oh, I know everything, blah, blah, blah. I'm mother nature. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest of the commercial, they're just like, ugh, mother nature, you idiot. You don't even know about all our fucking initiatives. Yeah. And she's like, huh, I guess I am a fucking stupid idiot. (laughs) Wow. You guys have extended your battery life and you've got an initiative to be totally like carbon neutral by 2050 or whatever. Damn. I guess I am being a bitch. I'm off to go do my hurricane now in in Florida. So she basically, she comes to, she's like, you know, you, you guys are shipping your phones in all fucked up ways. And they're like, ah, ha, ha. No, we're we're, We're we're, actually, yeah, we're going to stop doing plastic. We're sending them on uh, cargo. We're sending them on huge cargo boats that fuck our ocean up. Uh, (laughs) And then they're just like, well, this whole place, where's the electricity come from? And they're like, actually. Good feelings. um, Yeah. It just runs on. Also, I don't buy that. They said they said that every the entire Apple complex and every every Apple store runs on vibes, renewable renewable res- or, or or clean energy. There's no fucking way. I mean, who's really going to check? Honestly. And also, I'm sure that the the legal definition of clean energy is right. so opaque that 
what what I you know if they really cared about the environment they would make it so that I don't have to upgrade my motherfucking iPhone every couple of years because the battery starts to slow down and or the phone starts to slow down and the battery starts to heat up. Are you listening, Tim Apple? If you really gave a shit, yeah. if you really gave a motherfucking shit. If you shit, really gave a shit, you'd make it so I could bring it into the sauna in Ireland and it wouldn't ruin my whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You would- <laughs> I didn't know I cooked it alive. Yeah. That, that was your fault, actually. That no, one. that was Tim Apple's. Tim Apple should have made it so that they, they should have just, they should only have to come out with one every few years, not every fucking whatever it is, six months. Oh, we made, we, they made it. Did you know their biggest innovation, man? They made it like a gram lighter. A gram. A single gram. I do like lighter. the US, I do like the USB C port. Oh, Jesus. Suck my fucking dick, dude. Come on. Who cares? What's the difference? The it's difference? Faster? No. Someone no, in the no, comments no, no. actually is going to be fucking. And I know, okay? I know. I'm, no, it's I'm not, mad. It's at not Tim. that it's fast. It's not that it's faster. It's not that it's faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's that it's that they can't have this proprietary fucking oh, part yeah, yeah. anymore. Right. So yeah. they're guess what, man? They're still gonna make money off the part because you're gonna want the official Tim Apple logo on your cord. Otherwise you're gonna feel like a total moron. They're gonna get it like, well, you could use another uh secondary secondary market one, but it's gonna charge it a lot slower. <laughs> Cause that's how it works, man. You think Tim Apple didn't think of all this shit? Fuck you. Of course he thought of it. Three trillion dollar company. Show me the innovation. You know, he said that he watched, I read today that he said he watched the entire season three of Ted Lasso on the Apple Pro headset thing. Yeah, can you imagine? That's why he's uh, like that now. You know, you know, a hundred monkeys working on a thousand <laughs> fucking uh, AI things could not think of a dorkier scenario than Tim Apple watching the entirety of season three <laughs> on the Apple headset Pro Dingus, whatever it is, I can't. I can't even get through season two of Ted Lasso. It's too. It's oh, it's, it's just too. You, you uppity. made it through season one. Mm-hmm. It's got. Yeah, I did too. It's okay. charming. It's got good vibes. But then it's like okay, really good vibes. In in the Horrible. Ted Lasso universe, it's like the Holocaust never happened or something. Oh yeah, it's just like happy go lucky. Everything's great. We've. I've already trashed it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I don't need more comments at me. But I will say it's a show for morons. <laughs> touche touche my friend so that's another example of come you know you know there's more, more greenwashing more greenwashing yeah that that's the thing that they're they're just they're just all greenwashing and you know who else is fucking up man <clears throat> do you want to talk now about we're, yeah. we're really shifting gears oh speaking of well that's perfect speaking for this next shifting thing gears. brother put, pop the clutch you gotta I put the clutch no, in it's the shifting gear <laughs> jesus god the uaw they're they're they've started a little bit of their strike as of last Friday. Yes. At midnight. Yes. It's not the when entirety comes, of the UAW no. yet. The UAW is very large. It's it's one of the largest unions in the country with over 146,000 union members at four uh, GM. And well, no, there are hundred there are about 150,000 workers in contract negotiations right now with the big three automakers. But I think when you total it all up, there's about 400,000 total active members Jesus. of the UAW. And, <clears throat> and that's the thing. So, uh, gosh, there's so much here. There's, uh, they are doing a targeted strike, a more limited strike than just going after one company and putting the screws to them and trying to get a right. uh, get a contract with them and then go for the other ones, which is kind of the usual tactic. They're going after the big, like all three of these big three companies. That's Ford, GM, and Stellantis, which AKA is a Jeep, Daimler, Chrysler, Chrysler. Uh, Mercedes, some, like, European brands. Yeah, Mercedes. Peugeot. Peugeot. Um, which they said they're eh, the off topic, but they're not bringing Peugeot to America. I'd love to get one of those little French cars. You know, Fiat only sold like two hundred cars last year. Damn, I was driving one in Europe. They should. I liked it. I was driving a Volkswagen. My ancestors were like shaking their heads. <clears throat> but anyway, the guy leading this whole charge is Sean Fain, who is the is the recently elected president of the United auto workers. And, um, it's <clears throat> the background there is very interesting. I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but before, um, 
the United Auto Workers changed how they elect leaders, and I did not know and that. So, so there was a, it, it was it was almost like a uh, almost like the Democratic Party where there was, um, where there was it was like a delicate delegate program. It wasn't one member one vote. Yeah, and <clears throat> there was a big shakeup because an investigation by the Justice Department, um, you know, exposed a lot of corruption in the United Auto Workers. Uh, I believe it was. 13 union officials ended up going to jail for, you know, corruption, embezzlement. and Because mm, uh, people pay their dues. People pay <clears throat> dues to their unions that ends up supporting right. things like strikes. I believe they've got enough money to cover them for like 11 weeks of striking. Yeah, but so there were kickbacks, collusion with employers, and uh, there was this big push to root out a lot of this um, corruption in the United Auto Workers. And in 2019, they were campa- campaigning for a shift in, in the way they do things, which was they wanted to change to a one member, one vote, um, way of electing union officials. Mm -hmm. They were able to do that in, in 2021, December, 2021 with a, uh, an over like 63% of, of, uh, rank and file people were voting for that. And they elected Sean Fain, who was the leader of the, there was a reform caucus within United auto workers called unite all workers for democracy. All right. They wanted a more, kind of militant um, <laughs> approach than the the old guard was taking. Okay. Right? And so this is who they've got, Sean Fain. And, you know, he has this... Uh, he has this idea of this more limited approach where, and yes, as you're talking about the strike funds, those are to sustain members while they are striking and be able to pay people who are striking and not right. making money. <clears throat> and if this thing is going to go on for a long time, you obviously don't want to like, even though it's, it's upwards of $800 million you're talking about, but you don't want to blow through it all. Uh, so they are, um, taking their time, taking their time, but being very targeted about it. Uh, there was just an article in the intercept about how, um, you know, the big three companies are trying to anticipate, anticipate the moves from the United auto workers, right? Because United UAW is not calling them up and going, Mm -hmm. Hey, just so you know, we're going to be um, striking here, so you might want to account for that. Right. Uh, they're trying to. They're trying to. And so, <clears throat> there's a very funny clip of uh, a journalist talking about how you know we've obtained where they're going to be striking. It's it's these um, for Ford. It's these three plants for GM. It's these plants, and for Stellantis, it's these plants. They were way off. They and, and, interesting. And so basically, the the automakers were. Caught off guard. Yeah, p- preparing by basically moving personnel and equipment to different plants and being like, "It's okay, we can." And but it's it's ended up costing them money and it's hurting the the automakers. Wow. And of course, one of the big things that they're pushing for is wage increases, better vacation, better vacation uh, packages, and less uh, shorter work weeks. Right. Yep. Under 40 hours. They're talking about a 32-hour work week. <clears throat> and they're also talking you know, I about... I fucking love that shit. Oh, yeah, we love... Four-day work week, three-day bender, no yeah. surrender, Bernie Sanders. I Jesus fucked it up. God. Fuck. This is humiliating. Thank God nobody's still listening. Edit that out or I'll, I'll kill myself on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So part of the thing is that I believe it's G- GM's CEO, a lady CEO... Which is, I've got something to say about that with uh, the Rite Aid CEO. How you don't agree with women being CEOs? Of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. I totally disagree with it. Well, because there, there was that data point that more often than not, female CEOs are put in charge of dying companies. Oh, yeah. We've talked about this. Yeah. The glass ceiling. Or, yeah. uh, sorry. The glass floor, the quicksand floor. The floor is lava. The floor is lava. I think that's what it is. The, the, the floor is lava. The corporate America trope where they Wait, just before we get off i just want to I, I just want to make sure we give all the background here too so right. uh, the, the, they're pushing for a lot of things here and um this goes back to you know the economic downturn around you know 2007 to 2010 <clears throat> in in those employment contract negotiations the uaw gave a lot of concessions to the big three okay like they 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 got rid of they're, they they created this tiered system, which is something you see kind of in all of these uh, labor disputes. It was big with UPS. Um, it's it's where there's like different type of different different types of workers get different types of benefits and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and they want there to only be one kind of 
employee where you're not treating people differently. Uh, but then <clears throat> the people lost retirement benefits. So after around, oh, I that. after around 2007, employees no longer have retirement benefits like um, pensions, pensions or health care. Right. So these people are kind of breaking their bodies in these in these automaker plants right. and they're not going to be taken care of when they're um, when they're leaving these positions. Right. If you're if you're working there for decades you're, you're going to need health care in your retirement. You're going to be need to take, needed to be taken care of. Um, and so this is a pushback against all that because now things have changed since that time period, right? These, all of these companies are, um, are you know, record profits, just like... Uh, and the CEO, as I was saying, got a major compensation package because of certain milestones that were met when um, when this, the stock performance is one of them, certain delivery right. numbers, just, yeah. And she got, I believe it was over $20 million. Is it more than that? I believe it was over $20 million in, in compensation. But so when you, just the first half of 23, 2023, the, the big three, you're talking about $21 billion in profits. That's just the first half of 2023. Mm -hmm. um, and for the last decade, they've had profits of over $250 billion. Good for so you're them. talking about a very different um, climate. And so now these things they're demanding are, uh, they want to share in, they want to share in what the, you know, CEOs are taking because what they've seen is huge pay increases for CEOs, huge stock buybacks throughout the years. Oh yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, they're, you're, they're, they're having uh, real wages have gone down by 30%. Okay. So, while they're juicing CEO pay and doing stock buybacks, they're going, well, who's going to take care of us? And so that's where you're seeing the number. At their first, the first thing they asked for was a it was a forty percent increase in their in their pay over the course of four years. Right, and that's because they said, well, we want to match what, what you've bumped up the CEOs yeah. till. And so that has recently come down. They've not by a huge amount. It's the, it's now they're asking for a bump in the mid thirties, somewhere like thirty five percent. I believe it's thirty six. Yeah, and. <clears throat> I think the last thing the the automakers offered was about cookies, four, free cookies, fourteen to twenty percent over four years plus free cookies. So they're still pretty far. They want you know they want those they want those benefits back, those retirement benefits. They want the shorter hours, all of that. And all of this is kind of a a side effect <laughs> of inflation, because as this guy says it, this. Um, this chief economist, Joseph Bruce, Brucellus at RSM, said, after the inflation shock we've gone through, workers are going to demand more money given the likelihood that they've lost ground during this period of inflation. They're going to ask for more money, and they're going to ask for workplace flexibility, which is exactly what's going on here. I disagree, though. I, I think that's a bullshit. Uh... No, no, he's not saying that that's the reason. He's saying that that's part, that's part of inflation, is, is seeing like, wow, if, Senior no, no, but, CEO but, making all this money, but I don't think that framing is correct, and I think I don't think that's why. I think I think, and they're keeping their message very on point of like the reason we're asking for this is because of the way they're compensating the upper levels of these companies, and this we are is, not seeing this. It. Is just a, a comment about generally how workers workers want more money because it's more expensive to live. No, I know, but the workers want to share in the re the record profits. Of course. And they want to, the, the, Sean Fain has a thing, record profits demand a record contract. There it's you go. not about inflation, about like, it's about... But we record are the, profits we have are the, come because of inflation is what I'm saying. <clears throat> I mean, no, you're talking part, about $250 billion in the last decade. This this recent inflationary period is not driving all of that. But the the the, the, the they want to make sure they're being compensated for what they're making possible for these yes. people. I think that's, uh, I don't know, the real issue. Oh, wow. We got, we're just in the nick of time with this plumbing stuff going on. No, no, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine. We won't even pick it up probably. The big thing, the other big thing that we wanted to cover, speaking of companies fucking things up, is Airbnb and, oh man. Oh it, wait, that's it? You're done with the UAW? I think so. I mean, we, it's... What else was there? What uh, else was there you well, wanted to cover? So just to the so this will come out on Thursday. On Friday they are saying So tomorrow for you guys. Sean Fain is saying that they will be they're gonna try to widen the they're gonna hit more plants. 
if oh, they're, the, they're the strike have is more going striking to start workers to widen. if um if if there's no movement from the automakers and so yeah we'll see how this affects it all i i also want to touch on so i mean there is a there i mean this happens always right like there's the way they frame these things for people mm-hmm. it's always going to be about how it's going to affect you they're already they're already saying like oh it's going to cost you more money for it's going to cost you more money for cars. It's going to cost, it's going to, it's going to raise inflation. Yeah. Uh, but it's, I really think it's important to note that these are, I hope people, the, the, the United Auto Workers was always like a very important union and they often lead the way on a lot of these things. And they're talking about, there was a, in the, in the Wall Street Journal, there was a thing about how, whether the UA, whatever the UAW strike outcome, Elon Musk has already won. And they're saying like the the real person who's benefiting from all this is Elon Musk because he he doesn't have a unionized right. work base. And so he's he not won't run to, into any supply issues and people will naturally turn right. toward Tesla cars because but other dealerships are going to run out of supply. The real thing, like they should be, and they say like, oh, they're being greedy. They're already getting paid, you know, 10 to $20 more an hour than these other these, these non-union shops. And it's like the real thing people should be thinking is why, why are, you know, why are these people getting paid so much more? And and there, I hope there's a big push to unionize these non. Well, Elon shops. Musk, Elon Musk's Tesla people. I mean, he's pushed back quite a few times. And one of the things that he's used in his argument against that is that if you unionize, you don't get stock compensation. And he said, we've got people working, which I believe, of course, because their stock has gone up 200 fold over the last few years, is that they've got millionaires working on their factory floors. Yeah. Also, the other thing is, uh, I don't know if you saw Trump. He's uh, He said he's skipping. He's not going to the next Republican debate, but he is going to do his, uh, it might happen before this comes out. He's going to do his, uh, he's going to do a dump speech at in front of striking workers. Wow. That should be fucking momentous. But I mean, the- <clears throat> I love a shit. I love a GMC truck. I love a Ford truck. We I love our unions. We love, love it. Fuck. I love a truck. You saw me in the big truck before I said, I love the truck. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Trump coming off of a, uh, but I am curious to see, I, I am, I am curious to see how he's going to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how he's going to like how he's going to spin this he's only he's probably going to talk about what he always talks about they fucking robbed me and biden and all that shit and yeah you don't think he's going to try to like make a point of of being like i have your back and, probably and, and, the and democrats- he doesn't have to yeah he's probably yeah of course the democrats are lo- they love big so far, i've seen cars <laughs> nikki haley and tom scott and they were like this is bullshit. This is what happens when you allow a Democrat like Joe Biden. The unions have been able to take over. Yeah. And we've gone through that with teachers and um, yeah, people like to shit on unions for sure. Speaking of getting shit on Airbnb is just, well, there's been a lot of talk about how Airbnb has, uh, has had its day, has had its day in the sun. Well, sure. There's the, yeah, ruins everything as well, but, but it's been kind of, uh, you know they've talked about how different different cities are are seeing a huge decrease in in their Airbnb revenue, but what's going on in New York is a is a huge. They're cracking down, and it feels very real, right? Yeah. And so the thing was that they are they are somewhat new regulations, but they've kind of been on the books for a while. They're now enforcing them in a very real way. Yeah. So they've New York City has argued that these laws, the laws they've had on the books. Preclude people from renting out homes to guests for less than 30 days unless the host is present during the stay. Right. It also asserts that no more than two guests are allowed to stay at a time and that they must have ready access to the entire home. So the new, so it's an existing rule, but they're now enforcing it is no, no rentals less than 30 days unless someone is home at the same time. And you've got to now apply for a license for that. Right. So you you can have short term rentals, but you got to be home. I don't know how they're going to enforce that or prove it. But they you know, also are. Well, you know why? What? So what they'll do is, uh, here. Wait, let me find it. Oh yeah. Okay. So 
In order to collect fees associated with short-term stays, Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, and other companies must must check that a host registration application has been approved. So the, it now means that you have to get approved to be able to do this, right? You and and it's going to be right. much more difficult to get it. You've got to get yeah. licensure, and, and you've got to get Airbnb. And Airbnb has to valid has to verify it, right? And if they can't verify it, you're not going to be able to list it on their website. And hosts who violate the rules could face fines of up to five thousand dollars for repeat offenders, and That's platforms right. could be fined up to fifteen hundred dollars for transactions involving illegal rentals. And Airbnb is pushing back and doing. Their fucking stupid song and dance. They're saying short term rentals actually help the city's tourism economy, especially in parts of the city where there aren't very many hotels. Like, okay, sure. We got along just fine before Airbnb existed. Yeah, they're arguing that who? this they're mm-hmm. arguing that this, that the city code should allow unhosted rentals in some one and two family homes and that New York City's interpretation of its own laws is unreasonable. They said that the the registration system is unnecessarily complex, um, and its lawsuit was dismissed last month. But this um, Theo Yedinsky, the global policy director for Airbnb, said, quote, The city is sending a clear message to millions of potential visitors who will now have fewer accommodation options when they visit New York City. You are not welcome. (laughs) Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Airbnb estimated last month that there were nearly 15,000 hosts that have active listings for short-term rentals and homes across the city. And as of August 28th, the city had only received about 3,250 registration applicants and only 257 have been approved. Right. So, so they're basically saying that they've seen a they've seen a staggering 77% drop good. of active list of active listings. I think that it's good. I think it's great. I, I mean the, the, Florence the, is also doing this. Paris is capping how many days hosts can rent. Um Dallas is moving to rezone them and Philadelphia has also started um their strict own licensing new program, licensing. Yeah. It's all it's they're, it's frustrating because so many th- times with the, people are like, well, you know, what are you going to do? What can, what can we do? And it's like, regulate them. That's <laughs> just fucking do it. There are so many. It's bad for cities. It's, I mean, the, when you, you're talking about. It fuels the housing crisis. It drives up right. rents. And these people, now Airbnb is going, there's not enough hotel rooms. And the hotel rooms are going to, they're going to get more expensive. Bitch, Airbnb is. Dude, that was Airbnb. That was Airbnb. They're here. <laughs> they, Airbnb is more expensive than a fucking hotel. I got news for you, man. The best part is in this New York Times article. They, and there's plenty of hotel rooms, by the way. They have so many people who, uh, they have a... Co- oh, Dude, that's good. Fuck. It's okay. <laughs> We're at the end. If only Emil didn't try to force that big turd down his toilet, they wouldn't have to be tearing out this pipe in his wall. In, in the set here, in the set. Yeah. If you didn't clog the set toilet. Or were you going to say that I they... told you not to use that. Yeah. <laughs> Were, were you going to say that uh, a bunch of people have to sell their homes now? Yeah, but they pick, they're like, this, this person has to sell his home for $4 million. <laughs> yes, dude. Literally, they're like, what is this man going to do? He has to sell his $4 million home because he's no longer allowed to Airbnb, Airbnb his basement. His yeah. $4 million Fort Greene, I don't know, move to New Jersey. I don't give a fuck. Also, my they- brother in Christ, if you if you were relying on your Truly, extra how- three grand or four grand a month from Airbnb to just skate by, you need to be living in a smaller right. house. Down, like, get a $2 million house. Yeah. Jesus, God. The, and they have another one who's like, this poor family is not going to be allowed to <clears throat> afford their $6 million penthouse. Airbnb, I it's truly as I was reading about this, and the more I think about it, it is it's an abomination to me that this I'm using the wrong word. It, it sucks ass that this company is allowed to exist and do what it does, which essentially destroys the fucking housing market for everybody else. It's terrible. Yeah, there's all- entire apartments here in LA nearby. Because I had to stay in one years ago when I lived in uh, New York and I would come back to visit. There's this entire building that's just Airbnbs. They're just dog shit little fucking, they barely put any effort into it. The the lighting is just like the worst fluorescent shit. You just feel like, you feel like you're being watched. It just, that's how it feels. It feels like you're being watched. That's how shitty and unwelcoming it is. Just like, oh, we got TV, it got Netflix. Yeah. If you got your login, they're not even giving you Netflix. 
It also just kind of fucking ruins, you know, it ruins everything. Residential, it sucks. residential neighborhoods in a way that like they, they talk about, cause what's going to happen is you're going to drive everyone to hotels. And it's like, yes, that's how it used to happen. And hotels are often in more touristy locations. Like you look at a place like Hawaii and people used to go stay along the beach in Waikiki where there's, where there's hotels and stuff and where you can do all the tourism. Which sucks. I mean, fucking Waikiki is an awful place. And now you but, go, you can go stay in Moana's freaking bedroom if you want. <laughs> Truly, and yeah. like you see these horrible videos on Reddit of like drunk people starting shit with people who are who are asking them to quiet down their party so their you know kids can go to sleep or whatever. And it's like so it's just enabled people to go into neighborhoods where people live and be like, well, we're gonna party here for a week and we're gonna pay this guy's mortgage for the month. And like, sorry, fucking deal with it. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's, <laughs> I don't know. You just don't need tourists in everyone's fucking neighborhood at all times. Yeah. I always feel bad whenever I'm at an Airbnb in a residential neighborhood. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm part of the problem. And I know that the people who actually live here are probably pissed off at me because I'm in a, indirectly contributing to their cost of living going up or what the fuck ever. I don't know. Oh, I mean, and that, but we've obviously been those people using Airbnb in the fucking neighborhoods. Of course. And yes. You, I've also it, been those people in the Hawaiian neighborhood causing a ruckus. <laughs> I've never I, been to Hawaii. I was the drunk guy in the video. Yeah. No, the, you've Pacing never been to on Hawaii? Moana's lawn. What? No, yeah. I've never been to Hawaii. Okay. Well, that's a whole nother thing, but I'm not a colonizer, <laughs> dude. Um, the, it, it didn't used to be this way, but now when you book an Airbnb, like, coming up like within the week before your stay, you get an email like, Hey, we just want to go over a few ground rules. Like if you talk after 8 PM, we'll call the cops and kill you. <laughs> if you yeah. do not, use- you have to wake up at 7 AM <laughs> and water our plants and like flush the toilet. Or no, but it's so <laughs> like, you have to be like whisper quiet at yeah. all times. Take be- out the trash. Yeah. Clean up. When I, I rented a house in Joshua, that's where it should be legal is like Joshua Tree, remote ass places where I'm not staying in no double double tree Hilton out in out in the Joshua the Tree desert. is so pissed about it though. They yeah, have all the That's true. Fuck. You that's told true. me you rented a place where the guy was like the, I think it was Joshua Joshua Tree or Palm Springs, I don't but know the guy what. started emailing you being like the noise reverberates around the entire uh, valley I, or whatever. I'm always extremely respectful, truly, when I go. No, no, I, no. he was just telling you, like, oh, just so oh, you know. Yeah, He's yeah. like, I don't think you should even make phone calls while you're there. Yeah, I, I I was on mushrooms on that trip, and then the next morning, me and my buddy, part of the rules were you have to clean up before it gets cleaned. It's like brushing your teeth before you go to the dentist. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to eat Cheetos. Your job is to clean my shit for me, brush my teeth for me. Oh, see, I do it because I want the dentist to call me a good boy. I do it because I don't want my gums to bleed and I want to get in and out of there. It's a lot quicker. You don't want you. the dentist to be like, you've been such a good boy since I last saw you. I mean, I am I know I'm a good boy. I don't need the validation of my dental hygienist to tell me that I know what I am, which is a good boy who flosses every night. Even when you know it, it still feels good. That's true. Getting a pat on the belly. Incredible. Yeah. I like to... Um, I like to moan when they're cleaning my teeth. That's how they know... That's my feedback for them that they're doing it right. They're doing the job right. Uh, uh, anyway, should we talk about Rite Aid? One last thing. They're, if we're going to do one last thing, I feel well, like... Because we we're, we're talking about these corporations and, the, and them being naughty and doing bad things. Doing hood rat things with their friends. What? Which one? Burger King? FTX. FTX? Oh, yeah. I mean, FTX, what are you going to do? They're, they're, his parents... His parents are... It's so funny. <laughs> well, real fast. I guess uh, there's not much to say here other than Rite Aid is about to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. To re- Chapter 11 is when they restructure their debt. They've got $3.3 billion that they're um, hoping to restructure. And part of it also is because they're being sued for over-prescribing opioids. And bankruptcy allows them to... Um, man, you can't kind of wrap them all up into one big um, chunk that's easier to deal with. And they've got a female CEO since 2019. And it's one of those things where it's like, oh, here you go, uh, Susie. Why don't you deal with this? Clean it up for us. You fucking idiot. You can't Fuck do- Rite Aid. God, everything is 
dog shit about Rite Aid. Their logo sucks. Their logo does suck. It it's looks like, like it's, a light blue and a yeah. light green. It's just horrible. What a dumb company. Dumb, dumb. I really like Rite Aid. Oh, shut up. No, you don't. <laughs> Rite Aid sucks. No, they give great deals. Never made it as a good man. Never did it as a poor man stealing. That's me simulating walking through a Rite Aid aisle. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because they're playing the shitty music? Yeah. And it's like, it just feels like a nightmare. And anytime I ever go into a CVS or a Walgreens or a Rite Aid, I just feel like, man, I, do the people who work there just, how do they not? I, I would just kill myself. I would steal and then kill myself. I would just steal. I would actually just steal. Bankrupt the company. Yeah. Like this. I also have bad memories of Rite Aid because I, <clears throat> uh, a girlfriend of mine was- You had to buy Plan B for her? No. Oh. Was getting surgery. At a Rite Aid? No. Uh, <laughs> I should have let you finish. <laughs> but before the surgery, uh-huh. we got into a huge fight. Oh, no. You didn't want her to have the surgery. No, I didn't. It was not about the surgery. Oh. Uh, and it was horrible because I was going to be taking her and and I was like, maybe she'll just forget about it because of the... Forget about the surgery? <laughs> no, forget about the fight because oh. she'll be all loopy. Yeah. She didn't forget about it. Did you guys get into a fight at a Rite Aid? Well, then we're just in the Rite Aid and I'm like, and she's all loopy from the stuff. And I'm like, I need your insurance cards and all these. And she's just so mad at me. And I'm like, this is going to be a fucking nightmare. Oof. Babu, that's terrible. Yeah. It sucks when our girlfriends get mad at us, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Even when we're good boys. Even when we're good boys. I, do you, do you want to uncover this? Nobody's watching at this point or listening. We'll talk about Sam Bankman Freed and his parents in the bonus episode. Okay. Yeah, fine. And we'll also talk about Not if you don't want us. Man, to. there's a whole bunch of shit that I I still want to talk about. Uh we're going to talk about Emil's travel tales uh, 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 uh a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah, come join us. Come join us. We got to come come we're, come. We're going to keep talking come, shit. Come, we love talking shit. Come 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 come. 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 So long everybody. Bye.